so today we're here at Dinner Plain. But where the heck are you? You mean to say you don't know where Dinner Plain is? Oh, not a problem. We're going to show you one of Australia's best kept secrets of the Alpine area. So come with me and have a look. Today we're here with Demelza from the ski school and I just wanted to know Demelza, what can we do with the grandkids if we want to just palm them off for a while? Well, it, it's funny you should ask, we've got some really great facilities here at Hotham Del May. Um, we have a really great kids centre down at the Big D at Mount Hotham which is a really nice little area that's perfect for children, really protected, we're always open. Um, we have some really awesome programs there. The first is the three to five year old Mighty Might program really really well built and specific to the needs of that developmental uh, and physical level and then we also have a kids club program which runs from 6 to 14 years old the lessons are all day or half day whatever you need if you need a full day off or a half day off bring them on down we've also got kids snowmobiling in the afternoon as well that sounds fantastic Can yeah we do that yeah not actually you have to be you have to be less than 55 kilos to get on the little oh, tiny snowmobiles <laughs> but but they're always running at the end of the day when the weather's fine Excellent. yeah apart from the, the kids what about adults who might be a little bit older, right. a little bit tentative, but still want to enjoy the day. How can they? The best, the best thing about skiing is that you don't have to be hugely athletic to learn to ski. I've taught people to ski who are from all ages, from two all the way up to 80. And so um, the, the best advice, my best advice um, for, that, for that type of demographic is just to get a private lesson. If you get yourself a private lesson, you can be introduced to the sport, get some confidence out there on the hill with some one-on-one -on -one tuition. And then if you want to get some practice and maybe a little bit more, a few more tips through the week, you can get some um, group lessons then, so. Too easy. Yeah. It's not every day that you find an a over 65 in the chairlift line with a snowboard. And I've got with me today, Jane. Welcome, Jane. Hi. <laughs> so tell me, snowboarding at your age, how come? Well, I'm 64, but I've been skiing since I was about 16. And then about 10 years ago, I decided to switch uh, skiing. I'd been doing a lot of masters racing and my feet were starting to just scream. So I went snowboarding one day and was sitting on the chair thinking, why am I so happy? And I suddenly realized I didn't have that pain anymore. Uh, so I kept skiing a bit. And then my husband and I went to, to uh, America and uh, we decided we couldn't be bothered packing skis and all those heavy boots and all the rest of it. And I'm afraid I hardly ever ski anymore. So tell me though, you know, I've resisted snowboarding myself because I don't like falling on my backside. Now, is that the case with you? Well, learning, that's going to happen to you for sure. I think um, uh, good instruction's a really good idea. You also have to be pretty flexible and pretty fit and not too heavy. Okay. So, so when you say fit, how, how do you keep fit? Well, uh, I've got a personal trainer called Spot who's a Jack Russell Terrier. He's very demanding. He gets me up at 7.30 every morning. I pull on the shorts and out I go. And even in winter, I've got the shorts on because he sets a cracking pace. I have spent my life in gyms, but I think when you get to be over 60, I think you've got to be really careful with high impact. You've really got to watch how you work. I also do a lot of Pilates, um, which helps with core strength and things like that. Andy, yeah. where can we go snowshoeing today? Yeah, good question. There's so many places at Hotham we can go snowshoeing. So where we go, we're really limited only by the weather. So particularly when the weather's really good here at Hotham and it's blue sky and everything, uh -huh. we like to go north of Hotham along the ridge lines and the peaks. So is that towards out. Feathertop? Yeah, it is. So you know Feathertop? I do. Yeah, so that ridge line between Diamantina Hart and Mount Feathertop's the Razorback. So we like going out there. Fantastic and views. Yeah, they're stunning views. So one of the great things about our snowshoes is that we're safe on them. Uh -huh. So we'd need a, a pretty um, 
advanced skill set to tackle that terrain on our skis because of the steepness of the terrain and the ice, but with our snowshoes, um, I'll take clients in the 50s or 60s or even older along there quite safely. So Andy, how hard is it to go snowshoeing? Oh look, it's not hard at all Delmay, as you can see, you just strap any of your snowshoes and off we go. If you can walk, you can snowshoe, um, there's not much, much more to it than that unless it gets really steep, so it's pretty easy. Um, in terms of uh, fitness, you don't have to be particularly fit. You've to just come. got to be able to walk. You pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so how physically enduring is it on your body? Well, you get a good workout. So you get a good cardio workout when you go snowshoeing. So you're using your legs and you're using your arms. Plus we're at altitude, so we have to breathe that little bit harder to get it in. Uh -huh. um, but the main thing is it's really safe. So unlike with skiing or boarding, if we go snowshoeing, highly unlikely that you'll fall. So in other words, if you're not into the snow skiing or boarding, as you said, go snowshoeing. <laughs>